Hey everyone, it's Colin with Legalize Mr. Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. And today I'll be doing a one-off tutorial and I'm going to be painting uh, the Jump Pack Glow on this Jump Pack Captain, the Smash Captain. Uh, this is for my personal army, my Blood Angels army. Uh, just finishing him up, but I wanted to use him as an opportunity to film a few tutorials. So, excuse me, first one today. I'm going to be painting uh, these three areas of the jump pack, uh, like a blue glowing, very light blue uh, glow into those areas. Uh, the model is pretty much fully painted, um, except for the Thunder Hammer, the glow, and then the Sanguinary, he has sanguinary Guard Wings that I'm going to paint as well. Um, basing's done, everything's pretty much done, so uh, because these are he, because he's done, I'm going to grab some saran wrap because taping takes a while and we can kind of peel stuff up if we're not careful. So I'm just going to rip that in half. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to do a quick mask uh, just in case. Like I'm not really, I'm not really worried about overspray, um, but... In the event that I do get overspray, I really, really don't want to ruin this model. So let's see how I'm going to do this. I'm going to come under the backpack. Whoa, hey. Come under the backpack here and just kind of loop it around like that. That'll work. I'm not trying to protect the jump pack because the angle that I'm going to airbrush it at is going to do that for me. Um, but I do want to protect kind of the armor and everything just in case, just in case something goes horribly wrong. Cause I can snap the backpack off and repaint it. It would not necessarily be the end of the world. It would suck, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, having to maybe strip parts of the model, uh, would be, that would be awful. So I'm going to try and avoid that if we can. just in case something squirrely happens, but we're going to be very, very, very careful when we're painting these elements. So first up is going to be Vallejo Gaming Air Magic Blue. This is a very vibrant, true blue. Uh, then Vallejo Model Color Sky Blue, which as you can see is also very, very light, and Vallejo Model Color White. So first things first is we're going to do an overall base coat of the Magic Blue. Whoa. So I have, I unscrewed the, the paint and the dropper bottle top stayed in the top. So what I do is I tighten it back down and then kind of over tighten it and then loosen it real quick and boom, it's right back on there. There have been plenty of times when I've been in a hurry and haven't noticed and just go to put a little on the palette and dump like half a pot of paint on the palette. So I'm going to try and avoid that today. So I'm using a Badger Patriot Extreme 105 uh, with the super fine detail conversion kit. And that's where you get the real small nozzle. I think it's about 0.3 millimeter. And I like it because it has this pressure regulator on the bottom. So I want to keep this pretty low pressure because I'm really trying to get in there. Maybe not that low. I'm really trying to get in there and be careful. So we might get the paint to come out. There we go. Oh. That's a lot of spider webbing. why I always test first. There we go. That's all right. Always, always, always test first. There we go. And this is just going to be an overall base coat. Now, one thing that I want to make sure is when I'm spraying, I'm going 
I'm, I want to hit it straight on, but I also want to do it at an angle so that if there is overspray, it shoots over the top and it just goes past. It's not, I'm not spraying like this. I'm not spraying down onto the jump pack like that. I'm spraying into the jump pack like this. That way, if the paint goes past it, it's not going to hit the top of the jump pack. It's going to go right past it onto the glove is the goal anyway. There we go. So we just have to really be gentle on the trigger and be very, very careful with our placement. So I'm also going to kind of rest my finger on top like that and just kind of try to protect against the overspray as well. But you can see how small of a dot we're getting. That's perfect. And then And once I hit it in the middle, I just keep it there. So that kind of first little shot, so like this is a bigger area to hit here. So I'm in the middle now, so now I tilt this. Getting a little paint accumulation on the tip, so I'm just gonna take like a damp paper towel because the last thing I want to do is, is open it up even further and risk. So now I'm coming in kind of from the side here. And I'm coming in from underneath and you can see that overspray Right, oops, right on the glove right there. But on the top of the jump pack, we're still good. We're still fine. That's what I want. That's why I'm doing it. So now I'm coming in from the side like this. There we go. Now the other ones are going to be a little bit easier because we don't have to do a full overall base coat. We're just going to do we're just going to do the the more intense glow in the areas that the sculpt kind of dictates. The sculpt has already given us. Ooh. We're going to take that sky blue and thin that down. Okay. And what I mean by doing the areas that the sculpt has given us, so this depression right here, this one right here, the long one at the bottom, and obviously this main kind of circle here is where we're going to focus the highlights for the sky blue. Oop. That's okay. A little bit off on that one. That is such a small area, it's hard not to get mostly sky blue there, but that's fine. 
that's not a huge deal. I'm not going to go back and fix that. I'm not worried about that. I do want to be a little bit more circumspect with the other glow. So I kind of ease into it a little bit. So I'll, I'll pull back very, very slowly on the trigger just to make sure that the paint's going where I want. So I see it in that, in that wider depression and then I can pull back on the trigger a little bit more to kind of fill in. But my initial approach is very, so there we have a nice glow. And you can see how much of that magic blue is still left around the edges. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Uh, because that initial, that initial kind of little spot is like target practice. It's like calibrating where, um, where the paint's going to go. So if it's off a little bit, then I can move. Uh, but if I just go in and start hosing away, then it's going to be a struggle. Um, I might have to go back and fix it if it's in the wrong spot. So, um, you know, I always like when I'm doing kind of precision work like that, I really want to get in there and really ease into it so that I'm not, there we go. So this is just pure white. There was a little tiny bit of that sky blue left uh, in the cup. I didn't go in and like, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly clean out the cup. I washed it out and sprayed it out, but I didn't, I didn't make sure every little scrap of, of blue was gone. Cause if it tints the white a little bit, that's fine. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we're in business. Boy, this thing is shooting really fine today. Some airbrush days are better than others. You know, um, but this, this is shooting like this is the, the one Oh five is really doing work today. So that's good. Cause I'm filming a, filming a, uh, you know, precision airbrush tutorial <laughs> or a couple, I'm shooting a few of them today. So, uh, so now with this pure white, I'm going to start actually in the middle, in the big middle, just to get a feel for where that's going to go. And I just want to get it right in the bottom of that depression. I don't want to get it around the sides. That's not enough. There we go. See how I got it a little on the on the edge there. Not ideal. Um, I'm actually just going to go on the other edge now and just even it out. Come on. There we go. That way, see. So I made that mistake where I got a little white out on this edge. So I just went over to this edge and added a little white and that way I don't have to go back and try and glaze in the dark blue or anything like that. So even though it wasn't intentional, it looks kind of intentional now. So we're good, we're moving on. Life is short. Um, now these are gonna be, these are a challenge. I'm gonna try and hit it right in the center. I got pretty close on that one. I can't believe. I mean, I like the 105, but today is a particularly good day. Boom, right there. That's what I want. Right in the center. Woohoo! I'm gonna come back here because that still looks blue in the middle to me. There we go. That's white. Now we've got some serious some serious glow going on in that pack, jump pack. That's perfect. And we're done. And you can see on the top of the, on the top of the jump pack and on the sides of the jump pack, no overspray. 
nothing leaking out. We just have this nice vibrant, like bam, we are jumping. Super happy with that. So I really didn't even need the And we have got glowing jump pack smash cappy goodness right there. Super happy with that. So that's an, that's something that you know you can just just with repetition uh, is a really really great technique for doing jump packs of any kind. Um, and you can you know change the colors and uh, I really like that traditional kind of glowing true blue for Blood Angels. I think it stands out really well. Um, when I post this tutorial, I'm going to post a picture of a bunch of backpacks that I, or a bunch of jump packs I did for uh, Horace Heresy Commission. And uh, it just pops really, really nicely. Uh, Complements the red really well. So this is a great set of colors to use. So. And it's good to practice a little pre precision airbrushing um, where there, it's so forgiving. It is so forgiving to be doing jump pack glow because it's a big area. What's going on here? There, there we go. Um, it's a big area that's mostly hidden. You know, so when you're looking at a model, like that's usually when you're looking at a model, it's kind of from that angle. So you're not even really going to notice unless you flip it upside down. Uh, but that looks really good. I'm super happy with that. So that's how I paint glowing jump pack jets. Hope that was uh, instructive. Certainly covered some random ground. And then <laughs> uh, next time we're going to come back and I'm going to do uh, his thunder hammer. Uh, that's going to be kind of a glowing turquoise thunder hammer. Um, and then lastly... I'll do his uh, Sanguinary Guard wings, and then the model will be finished. Glue, glue the wings on, and the model will be done uh, and ready to go uh, smash. So thanks as always. Thank you for your support, uh, and we'll see you soon.